Red Snow is a big, romantic, historical, fantastic novel. It's about people and it's about monsters. It's about the, some of the big events of modern history and it's about love and it's about hope and it's also about uh, death and destruction. Um, at its core are three main characters, a, a medic from the American Civil War, a church repairer in uh, the cathedral city of Strasbourg uh, during and before the French Revolution, and an idealistic young Marxist in Prohibition era New York. Um, in fact, all of these characters have dreams and ambitions, and all of these characters' lives are cut across by the intervention of something other, something else, something strange, something dark. Um, it's really an embodiment, not just of the vampire myth, but of the uh, um, the anti-creation, um, the devil, the demon, whatever it is that um, any society has as opposition uh, to all of that which is good. And in one way or another, these people are infected, destroyed, influenced, or overcome by this thing. Having said that, um, and acknowledging the story's strong supernatural elements, I'd like to think it's also a, uh, a novel which portrays um, with some realism um, these big events and um, the way that people's lives interact, intermesh, overcome, and are changed by these things. The eras that the uh, that the Red Snow is set in, the uh, Civil War, the French Revolution, uh, to a degree the Great War and um, Prohibition uh, era New York. Um, what they all have in common, I think, is that a, um, a sort of a clash between um, people genuinely striving to try to make something better for the world and the darker undertow of the fact that these attempts in one way or another always uh, go awry and often in quite horrible and disastrous ways. So um, I was really offsetting um, the scale and the scope of human ambition against the things which um, brings it down and in a way um, the demons which uh, the book wrestles with are as much to do with the demons within humanity itself as any other kind of uh, creature or monster and many of the dark deeds indeed and indeed the good ones uh, come out of humanity not out of anything else. I suppose at the end of the day I wanted to put um, the fragile, the fragility of human, uh, individual human lives and hopes and also to a degree uh, the fragility, the essential fragility of the myth of the vampire which um, is in itself a strange and wonderful thing for all its darkness against these big grinding gears of human history. Um, at the end of the day, all fiction is really about the present or what we see as the present. Uh, you can write about Roman times or you can write about um, events endured by um, tripods on the planet Zarg and at the end of the day you're still writing about the world that we live in or at least the world as we perceive it. I, um, I find that most fantasy is basically using history as a springboard. Um, Tolkien was using um, essentially Norse tropes. Um, Game of Thrones is a combination of um, Renaissance Italy and um, medieval Europe and um, these things are then twisted around and given slightly different names and um, they can certainly be immersive and moving and 
um, a whole world can be created. But I think at the end of the day, um, although I'm very happy to write like that and I enjoy reading and watching those kinds of works, uh, I'm also drawn to the real and the contrast between the real and the fantastic. And I think the idea of a dragon on some faraway mountain on some mythic continent on another planet um, is lovely and fascinating and can create an enduring tale. But the idea of a real dragon in a real mountain in the north of England in 1985 um, is to me more challenging and interesting because it sets off um, sets a lot of other ideas spinning off for it so um, I'm drawn to the past because it tells us about the present and I'm drawn to the past because it allows to make my fictions to me and hopefully to the reader seem resonant and real uh, I think when you create um, a character, you're really always looking for um, feelings and motivations. Um, I think characters in books are generally probably far more driven and motivated than most of us are in real life. Um, I see people every day who just seem to be sitting staring into space when they could be doing something else. Um, that tends not to happen in a novel. <laughs> but I guess we're all guilty of it sometimes and the idea as well that um, people can drift through life without perhaps ever really putting their head above the parapet or having ambition is um, disturbing and worrying but hard to achieve in fiction and doesn't necessarily really make for a particularly um, engaging story so it certainly would be a challenge to try to tell that. Um, the particular drives and dreams that the main characters in Red Snow have, uh, Carl Houtman um, being a medic who wants to change and improve the world and then becoming something else and um, wanting to try to make sense of what that something else is, Ezekiel with his drive to paint and make beautiful things out of things which are fading in cathedrals and churches in old France and also his drive to support and protect his family and Harry with her ambitions to make the world a better place through Marxism um, all of them have quite clear-cut aims in their lives which uh, in one way or another and despite um, their evident involvement in the world make them loners because they are I think pretty much by nature they're not the sort of things that everyone else would share. Um, I think I probably uh, wanted them to have these dreams and ambitions first of all to put them in contrast with the the drives and the great historic surges which they're fighting against as they scrabble to keep their own world and their own hopes apart and then also as a counterpoint to the um, essential emptiness at the very heart of the story this darkness and emptiness at the heart of the very sto story which the monster the creator itself embodies and also I think another kind of darkness and emptiness which is the, which is at the heart of the story which is to do with the fact that um, uh, the way I keep describing people's society's hopes and ambitions going awry, going wrong, the horrors of war and revolution and so forth.